Thank you for joining us today. Please take a moment and visit theramp.org to get connected with us. We want to know what God is doing in your life through this ministry. Also, if you would like to support the ministry financially, you may do so there. Now prepare your heart to hear from our team. We pray this will enrich your walk with God. Hey guys, welcome to our Ramp podcast today. My name is Sonia Stewart, and I'm here with my friend, Miss Elise Beasley. Hello, everyone. It's so awesome to have you guys with us today. Yes, we're so excited that you are joining in with us today and just going to jump on this conversation. Yes. This month, we have been talking about faith on our social media yeah. platforms, if you have noticed. And Elise is married to Pastor Brian Beasley, if you haven't noticed. And they I feel like your sole message for you as a, you guys as a couple is faith. Like anytime, yeah. anytime Brian or Elise gets up, you're going to hear a word on faith. Like, <laughs> and it's because you guys have lived it, you yes. know, but, and also you just had a baby. Yes. yes. I just had a baby. Um, our fourth child, our baby girl, Ember Kate, Ember Kate, Ember Kate, it. her name means pure fire. Oh, so and she's the cutest she's little thing. She she's is. She's beautiful. She's so sweet. How has this season of life been after having a baby in quarantine? Just yes. tell us a little bit about that. It's been it's been an interesting experience, you know. I mean, you are you're definitely trying to stay in a place of wisdom and hearing from the Holy Spirit on what to and not to do with a baby, having a family of four children, you know, that's in itself is an adjustment and then putting everything that's going on in the world in it. It's just, it's crazy. It's one of those things to where you literally are asking Holy Spirit every day what to do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> just because it's, I mean, you're all these guidelines and just taking precautions, but not going in a place of fear in it at the yeah, same time. Yeah, for sure, know, so. for sure. And I guess, like I said, we're talking about faith, so let's just jump into it yes. because that season, that has had to have stretched y'all's faith, yes. right? I mean, to make those decisions and kind of the uncertainty of what is coming next oh, yeah. um, and stretched your faith in that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just to think about life right now and even just, I mean, usually around this time, everyone starts thinking about Christmas time, the next year, what are we thinking about planning? You know, you just went on vacation. Yeah. You want to go back somewhere or not go back somewhere. You know, you're yeah. like, I'm not going back there again. Let's try another place. <laughs> But we haven't been able to do that, really. You know, I mean, it's been a select few people who've been able to really kind of branch out. But it's like we're, we're all kind of like, what's going on? Where's the next step with all of this? What is our, you know, I mean, our five-year plan? What is our our <laughs> yeah, one-year plan? What is our one month? Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. what is it? And it's just, it's it's definitely a place of right now hearing almost daily of what to do, you know, just mm -hmm. because there's constantly, I mean, if you go on social media right now, it is constantly a, a spurt of new news of what's the new update with coronavirus? What's the new update in the world? And you're just, I mean, it can be overwhelming. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, it is overwhelming. Yeah. Honestly, it is. Yeah. It's really overwhelming. But then it's just like, okay, that is the world's view of it all. God, what are you saying right now? Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest place to be right now, just to know that you are doing exactly what God tells you to do. For some people, that is, we need to walk outside, like, you know, go back into the world, go back into doing stuff. And that is their place of wisdom and faith from the Holy Spirit. And then some people, it's stay home, you know, do certain things, do certain practical things. And that's their wisdom and revelation, you know, mm -hmm. and not disregarding either or, but just really hearing for yourself yeah. what God is telling you to do in that place and staying in faith rather than fear. Because it's so easy in this time to get in a place of fear. Mm -hmm. It really is of a place of, of just listening to what the world has and only t keeping that in and shutting everything else out. And it's just like... You can't do that, right. you know, because that's where 
That's where that fear comes in. That's where you get crippled and you don't think you can live life anymore. You know, even if you're, you are taking precautions, you can still live life in a, it just a different way. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and so that's just the thoughts that I've had over. I mean, I've honestly had to be quarantined in a sense of really taking precaution because, mm-hmm. I mean, I started quarantine pregnant, almost about to have the little ember. And then I had to stay in quarantine because of having a newborn. Yes, I know. It's like, I haven't seen you. I feel like I haven't seen you. and We're finally getting to have this conversation, you know, in months. But it's true. And there is so much uncertainty, I think, for people. But just like you said, looking at things, instead of looking at everything going on around us from a perspective of fear, but looking at it instead from a perspective of faith, from God's perspective. And I think it's really interesting how God uses all things for our good, even if it is a situation that is sticky and uncomfortable like 2020 has been. (laughs) Let's just face it, 2020 has been all the sticky and all the uncomfortable, you know. But I can also see the goodness of the Lord in it in that he is stretching our faith oh, yes. because we don't we can't necessarily see our hand in front of our face at the moment like yeah. we can't see you know five steps in front of us but he's just asking us to believe in him for the next step yes. you know just believe in me for the next step I know it's uncomfortable right now and I know it may feel like a trial right now but if you'll just take that yeah. next step you yes, know yes just, just keep going yes because in in it all it's an in, it's an endurance yeah. thing I mean we were talking about that earlier about how in Hebrews it talks about run your race with endurance mm-hmm. and that and right after it that he's the author and finisher of our faith he is the one who will purify and perfect everything in us and so we have to see this season even though it can be very nerve wracking, very, um, in, in, in the sense of those are the feelings you want to feel, but just knowing, just trust him, just knowing to, to stay focused on the words and promises that he has given you through his word, through uh, prophetic words, whatever it may be, but just really trusting him in this time to know that he's going to fulfill those things, that those things are not said in vain, that he's going to actually do do what he has said. Absolutely. And everything that we go through in that, he has purpose in all of it. Yes. You know, and when we believe when we're in the middle of those trials, they are painful and they're stretching, but there is purpose in it. Because just like you were talking earlier, when we go through those things, he has a reason for all of it. And we come out of it. If we believe in faith, we're going to come out of it stronger and able to help someone else. And just like you were talking about, um, tell read them that scripture that you were talking about earlier. Yes. So I was talking to Sonia earlier about the story of Jairus when he was on his way with Jesus to his house to heal his daughter. And it's in Mark 5. And it says, but Jesus refused to listen to what they were told and said, the Jewish official, don't yield to fear. All you need to do is keep on believing. He just heard as they were walking with Jesus that his daughter was dead. He doesn't need to bother him anymore. Just keep on moving. Don't bother the master. Your daughter's dead. Just accept it. Give into that. In one one um, translation, it says that don't, he says, don't give into the fear. Just keep on believing. Wow. And it's just, he could have taken that moment to accept what was said to him. I mean, it was a practical, it was a natural uh, development. It was something that was told. It was a fact at that point to everybody. But Jesus looks at him. And he says, don't, don't give into fear. Don't yield to fear. All you need to do is keep on believing. Mm. And I loved that because it was a place where they weren't at the house yet. So he had a choice the rest of the walk of whether to step into fear and agree with that word or to stay in faith and agree with the word that God gave him wow. the entire walk back. Because they weren't home yet. Yeah, He still had to stay in that place of believing that Jesus could heal his daughter, that bring her back to life, whatever that uh, the people were saying in that moment. I mean, who knows what people were talking around him yeah. while they were walking, like, why is he still doing this? She's dead, you know? And Jesus is saying, she's only asleep. 
you know, and just believing the word of God, even in that he had to. And I mean, even as a parent, I can't imagine that walk, you know, Mm -hmm. of walking to your house and being like, okay, God, I believe you. And just, and believing this is the word I'm holding on to. And he only let three disciples come in with him because he wanted faith in that room, you know? Mm -hmm. And when he went in, she woke up, you know? And it's just, those are the stories that you can see in scripture. Abraham, you know, the three Hebrew boys of just this endurance in their faith Mm -hmm. to believe the word of God the entire time. Yeah. You know, I mean, Abraham, 25 years, 25 years for a promise. I mean, there's moments, I mean, we wait, you know, a couple of months. Right. Or (laughs) we're like, okay, God, this is the time that you are going to do this. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. It's this time. I know it. This is, this is your whole big plan and this is it. And then we go through it and we're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. Or it might be, we think it's two years down the road or whatever, you know? And he's saying, I do not wear a watch. That was a prophetic word I got a long time ago. I do not wear a watch. We can't put on God a time limit for the promises to happen. Wow. Because he is going to fulfill it in his timing, in the perfect timing to where we're we're going to endure through some testing and trials. But through it all, he's going to bring it about. And we're just going to look at him and just like, wow. You know, and just in amazement. (laughs) so good yes it's just it's just one of those things to where it's like in the moments you don't understand it Mm -hmm. you don't understand why you're going through what you're going through and and sometimes you just want to be like why why what is going on yeah yeah but it is I love what you're saying with that it is that leaning in to the process and just like you said he he had this journey he had this walk on the way to the house where Mm -hmm. where his daughter he knew his daughter was dead and he knew something in his mind to be fact but I do believe on that journey it's like he had this decision of but I'm going to wrestle with this in my heart what do I know is true what is the truth about what Jesus has said to me and just like you said if we can lean into that process and endure through the test and the trial you know and in in James we have to I mean if we're going to talk about faith it's like we have to read James right but yeah it says in James chapter one dear brothers and sisters when troubles come your way Consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Because I really believe when that happens, we come to this place of full surrender to God. Because that's what faith is. Yes. Faith is just fully being surrendered to the will of God and trusting that His way is better. Yes. You know? And so when we can endure through that, it's like every test, and, and it's like if you feel like you're going through trial after trial after trial right now, which I think a lot of our yeah. nation does, it's like one thing after another. It's like, does this ever end? Oh, yeah. But we as Christians, we can count it all as joy yes. when we are being tested because we are being refined. Just yes. like, you know, that verse in Job that says, you know, I will, I've been refined by fire and I'll come out as gold. Yes. And that is what the Lord wants to do in us right now through this season of uncertainty and this season of questioning and not knowing what's going to happen next, what's, what's going to happen a few months from now. Yeah. All we have to do, our job in all of this, is to lean in to God, to lean yes. into what the Holy Spirit is saying and apply our faith there. Yes. Let Him refine us. Yes. Let Him let Him use everything to for us to give us an opportunity to be able to trust Him more. Yes. You know? And when we do that, just like it says, we'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We will be fully fulfilled. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can say it that way. Just completely fulfilled yes. in what God wants to do in us. And then we come to that place of being able to minister to yes. others out of that place of faith. Yes. Because it. it's it's a place of, like we've said so many times, an utter dependence upon yes. God. That is what the building and the testing and trials is like. We don't look at to anything else, but we look to God mm-hmm. in everything, you know? And I just think about... Um, 
just the this place of knowing that outside and after this that there's going to be victory and that through that we're going to be able to tell that story yes. to bring other people out of that place too mm-hmm. you know and and giving them hope and faith so that they can come out of it you know yeah yeah and I think one of even like the practical things we can do is look at all of these things from a place of joy yes you know because we've been talking about um I know Miss Karen lately has been talking about uh, martyrs and we've been discussing just what it looks like for true persecution yeah. of the church and the trials that they they went through oh, because yeah. I mean in comparison sometimes to my life I think I'm going through a trial and I'm like oh my faith yes. my faith is being tested but really yes <laughs> I'm still when you very, read when you read yeah. it, like I'm, I'm sorry, still, yeah, God. I'm sorry, God. That's um, I didn't mean that. Um, it's like we're still very, very comfortable, you yes. know. But when you think about these martyrs that went through what they went through, the persecution of their children being killed even before them, oh, being beheaded, being stoned, and yet in every instance they counted it as joy. Yeah. They counted it as an honor, you yeah. know, to be persecuted and to be tested. Yeah for the sake in the name of Jesus. And oh, so it's like, when we look from that perspective, it's like, I oh know. yeah, I can I do know. this. I can run this race with endurance. Oh yes. And let me just share this quote that I shared earlier. It's from Smith Wigglesworth. And he is just an amazing man of God. If you haven't looked into his life, yeah, it's phenomenal. look into it. I mean, mm-hmm. just testimonies of miracles and just, I mean, you just need to check it out if you haven't. But Smith Wigglesworth said this, Great faith is the product of great fights. Great testimonies are the outcome of great test. Great triumphs can only come out of great trials. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, it's just, it, it's truly that. When you're in it, you don't want it. Yeah. You don't want it. I mean, who wants no, a trial? it's uncomfortable. Who wants a test? Yeah. It's like, I mean, even in school, you didn't want tests. Yeah. You know, it's like, who wants this? But when you come out of it, there's great victory. There's great a great testimony. You know, there's just so many different things within the kingdom that will come out of that testing and that trial, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. of bringing other people out of it, of great fruit in your own personal life, you know, and then just getting closer to Jesus, yeah. you know. That's the just the ultimate goal is just, I just want to be closer to God yes. in all of this. I mean... I'm thankful for the fruit. I'm thankful for, you know, uh, the testimonies that come out of you giving your testimony. Mm-hmm. But through it all, it's all about you getting closer with Jesus. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And that's that's what he wants to do in all of us. And I think, you know, I think as we wrap up today, that's the word of the Lord for all of us is that we've all had a, yeah. a pretty rough year in some way yeah. or another. But we're going to look back on this year and see all of the fruit that was produced in our lives. And we will probably look back on this year with such thankfulness in hindsight when we see the deep work of faith that God has done in each and every one of us and done in his church as a whole. You know, in this whole time that we've been a little bit separated, he's working in every one of us so that when we're able to come back together in the ways that he intended, it's going to bring forth such fruit, such fruit. So we want you to be encouraged today and uplifted today. And Elise, would you pray over them before we wrap up? Lord, I just pray right now for every single person who is watching or listening to this, Father. Lord, I pray over them, Lord, that you would give them fresh faith to believe the promises that you have spoken, Father. That when you speak a word, it does not return void. That it is in the atmosphere and we can grab hold of them and believe in faith every word you have spoken. And Lord, right now, I just pray over each person blessings over them, God, that they would be blessed in and out of every season that they come in, that even in a a Psalms where it's talking about that you're going Mm -hmm. to bear fruit in every season of life. And even in this season during coronavirus, during this pandemic, that you would bear fruit Mm -hmm. in your life. And I pray over each person that they would hold on to these promises until they see them fulfilled, Father. 
We thank you for this, God. We thank you. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we love you guys, and we do just bless you with endurance and strength for the journey. I hope you guys have a great day, and you are blessed in whatever you do. In Jesus' name. We hope you've enjoyed this message from The Ramp. For more information on this message and other teachings, visit us at theramp.org slash store. Connect with us for all the latest news on services, events, and more by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. God bless, and we'll see you next week.